in this video lecture we're going to talk about subshells now subshells are uh, is there's nothing different about subshells we discussed we discussed and we explained what orbitals were so subshells are just a group of orbitals and a group of degenerate orbitals remember the word degenerate is used for orbitals having exactly the same energy level so um, a subshell is basically uh, we studied a lot of orbitals we studied s orbitals p orbitals d orbitals and f orbitals as I have shown over here, this over here was an S orbital. It was a spherical region around the nucleus where there was a higher probability of finding an electron. Then you had P orbitals and there were three types of P orbitals. Uh, you had a P orbital on the X axis, on the Y, on the y axis and on the Z axis. So you had three different types of P orbitals, PX, PY, PZ. And they were double shaped. If an electron was in a p orbital, its electron density or the probability of finding an electron would be somewhere in this, in these two lobes. And to an outside observer, it would always appear that the electron is everywhere in this uh, in this region because an electron is traveling very fast. Uh, similarly, you had uh, d orbitals and the five different types of d orbitals, uh, and they were all uh, lying on different planes. So they had four lobes instead of the two lobes as uh, shown in the p orbitals so one d orbital was different so there were regions around the nucleus where you could find an electron so so there were different types of d orbitals and then you had f orbitals and for a levels chemistry you don't really need to know the shape of the f orbitals but there were seven different types of f orbitals so you had all these bunch of orbitals each orbital could contain a maximum of two electrons and we discussed that as well now so what is a subshell? A subshell is when you group different orbitals together based on the similarity on the similar similarity of energy levels if they have exactly the same energy level. So we're going to talk about subshells. And the first subshell I'm going to talk about is the S subshell. And an S subshell has only one orbital which is the S orbital. So so it only has one s orbital so there's only an s orbital in an s subshell so it's basically when you talk about s subshell or s orbital you're basically talking about the same area where you're going to find an electron so so this is an s subshell it only has one s orbital and since an orbital has a maximum of two electrons so an s subshell can accommodate a maximum of two electrons so uh, this is the simplest or uh, simplest subshell now moving to the p subshell so when we talk about the p subshell what we basically mean is so when we talk about the p subshell so we we had these three p orbitals one was py one was px one was pz now when you talk about these three p orbitals together that would be called a p subshell so uh, whenever we talk about the p subshell we basically grouping these three orbitals these three orbitals are identical they have exactly the same energy level the only difference is that the orientation of each of the uh, probability density of the electrons is different uh, in one case the electron is found on this axis in the other case the electron would pro has a high probability of being on the other axis in the third case the, the electron has a very high probability of being on the z axis so apart from the orientation and the direction uh, the three orbitals are exactly identical. They have exactly the same energy level. So when we talk about the P subshell, we're going to group them together. So whenever somebody mentions the P subshell, what he basically means is that he's talking about the Px, the Py, and the Pz orbitals together. So basically, whenever you talk about the P subshell, you're basically talking about three P orbitals. So you're grouping these three orbitals together and since each orbital has can accommodate a maximum of two electrons so a p subshell can have a maximum of six electrons so just uh, don't get confused whenever you see a p subshell it basically means that uh, you're talking about the three p x p y and p z orbitals together instead of separate p orbitals Similarly, you had the D. You have the D subshell, and as you can see, the D subshell is made up of five D orbitals. 
So there are five separate D orbitals and all these D orbitals are identical except for this one. The orientation is different. The plane in which they are lying is different. One is lying in the XY plane. The other one is lying in the uh, YZ plane. The third one is lying in the XZ plane, etc. These are on the X and Y axis. So the orientation is different, but they look exactly the same and they have exactly the same energy level. So whenever you talk about the D subtree, you're basically talking about the five D orbitals, the five different D orbitals, and you're talking about them together. So, so you're basically talking about the DXY, DYZ, DX square minus Y square, the DZ square, and then there's another one. The fifth one is the DXZ orbital. So you're basically talking about them together. And since each D orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons, so if two electrons go into each of the D orbitals, so when we talk about the D subshell, the D subshell can accommodate, we're talking about the five D orbitals together and together they could accommodate a maximum of 10 electrons. And moving on, the last subshell that we're going to discuss is called the, it's called the F subshell. You don't really need to know much about the F subshell, especially the names of the orbitals and the shapes. What you just need to know is that an F subshell has a, has seven, or, seven F orbitals. So there are seven different types of F orbitals. So it has a total of seven different F orbitals. So when we talk about orbitals, so when we talk about the F subshell, we're basically talking about the seven F orbitals, the different F orbitals together. And since each orbital has a maximum of two electrons, so seven F orbitals will have a maximum of 14 electrons. So that's the number of electrons in each of the subshells. So you have, you have uh, four different subshells. An S subshell, that just has one S orbital. A P subshell, that has three p orbitals then you have a d subshell which has a total of five orbitals and you also have an f subshell which has a total of seven orbitals so 14 electrons in the f f subshell 10 in the d six in the p subshell and only two in the s subshell